All right, so technical documentation is typically featured about, features information about products or processes, things that you manage within PLM. It has a well-defined structure. I, a lot of people still like to have a printed copy in their hand, but by and large, uh, the, there is an increasing tend to consume this information electronically. Also, this information is topic-based or it's modular. Uh, we're talking about documents that aggregate context insensitive content that can evolve on its own and therefore can be reused in many places. And I'll show you examples of that. So what are some examples of documentation? Well, service manuals. This is uh, an example from our customer that we've been working with over the past year and a half. I know you can't read the text, but it's service related, service manual information where there's procedural steps and there's different kinds of formatting based on the kinds of data. There are graphics and so on and so forth. Training material, help for, for software, right? We're, same type of thing. You've got text, you've got tables, you've got lists, you've got graphics that you want to pull in, snapshots of your, of your user interface. Work instructions, various diagrams, pictures from, that illustrate a manufacturing process step. Uh, again, tables, lists, things of that nature. And then finally, things like marketing documents where you have a information about a specific part or a family of parts that have a, a fairly consistent structure. So at any of these documents, I can go down this list and say, you know, does it have a well-defined structure? Does it, uh, is it about products or parts or whatever? Uh, is it topic-based? Is it based on modular information? All right, so what is structured content? I have an example here that I try to illustrate what that is. Assume that these, I don't know if you can read that text, if you can't, I apologize. On the right, it's meant to represent uh, what I call document elements for the, for the document, okay? You've got a title, you've got an optional subtitle, you've got an overview section which has a description and a graphic, you've got a list of features, you may have uh, other various components that you want to address in the document, uh, optional or mandatory. All of that is controlled by the schema. All right. So as the author is adding content to this document, they are driven by this schema. All right. So as they're, they're entering information, the, the tool will direct the user as to the kind of information that you, they should be entering. They don't format. Formatting is centrally controlled. So they don't, they're not picking colors of text, or they're not picking sizes or types of fonts or positioning graphics. That's all maintained centrally, again, in an effort to control uh, or have you, consistency across your documentation set. You can have many different schemas, you can have many different styles, all right, but by and large, those are managed centrally. And, and, and on and on, right? So what does this do? Well, I already mentioned, it enables compliance to company standards or to, to industry standards, if that's, if, if the kind of documentation should support that. And it, and it decreases significantly the ability for your authors to uh, deviate over time from what you expect them to have in your, in your documents, okay? How do we integrate with PLM? Well, when you create a document, some of that content is new to the document itself. It's text that you're typing in, it's lists that you're adding. But also, there is the ability to reference other items within Innovator, okay, so graphics, for example, is most likely being uh, created by your illustrators. They have a specific role, that's what they do. They take screenshots of your software, they take pictures of your manufacturing process or your par parts or whatever, right, and they store them in Innovator, that's what they can do. You may have part information, or you can have part information, that your, your engineers are creating that information or your, or your CAD users are, are originating that, all right? I may want to pull that in directly. And when I do that, I've got not only a link between the document and the parts or the link between the graphics, but I have a link between the, those things and specific elements within the document. So as those parts evolve, I know what documents are affected by it at a granular level. But when I open the document, I know where the information is used within the document. 
okay, and I have the ability to either accept the fact that there's been a change or I ignore it. Um, and this is just sort of illustrates that point. So here I had a graphic in, in, in this uh, mock-up of a document. Uh, it referred to a specific image. That image was then updated by the illustrators. Um, the author of this document, through a report, a query, or whatever, or the next time he actually tries to edit the document, will know that that graphic has been updated. And what do you want to do with it? Do you want to uh, update it, or do you want to just ignore it? But we, we, the only way we can do that is establish that those, those types of associations. All right, so enabling product variability. I was talking about this earlier. Um, many times within your documents, like for example, if you had a car manual or, or, or any manual of, of a electronic device you have, uh, many times that manual supports many models of that product. So it'll say if you have models such and such, then go to page, right? But by and large, most of that content spans all of those models, right? There's no need for you to create a copy of those documents, right? Because what happens if the common content changes? You have to go back on all of them and change them, right? So we support the ability to identify characteristics about at a, at a real granular level within content within the document. So for example, I may have a features list that I, that I identify with a particular model. You can, uh, you can build whatever uh, or define whatever characteristics you want, but you're basically making associations between those characteristics and elements in the document. I have a different model, that feature applies. So when you publish this information, say you publish it to a website, and somebody's going on to that website and says, I have model X. I should be able to provide them as part of the publishing process, this thing that I'll talk about at the end, with content that is specific to what they want. All right, if this element is a numbered list, the list is updated automatically. There won't be any holes. Uh, publishing, when you talk about modular or topics-based content, the ability to pull in information from Innovator as sort of a dynamic document. It, publishing is not just a matter of taking a static document and bringing it to print. All that information has to be aggregated. It has to be, you have to apply those same filters that you use in your options. So that publishing process takes into that, that into account. It brings in all the pieces of documentation that you may have referenced so that based on your query and your filters, you've got a set of content which you can then send off as just an XML, transform it if you wish, uh, send to PDF generation, which will be part of the product that's what we're working on right now, or HTML. The editor is HTML, so we're, we'll, we're pretty much have that, um, and you'll see that in the editor. All right, so uh, real quick, it is a WYSIWYG environment. This, the area on the left here, I mentioned the structured content, that is a visual view into what that structure is. Anything you do over there, you can do in the content area and vice versa.